red lights on? Yep. day. how are you going? My name's Indy, VK 2 X-Ray Bravo. And uh, what we're doing here is imagine this is my truck. Unfortunately, it's covered in hands too. But unfortunately, I don't have my truck here, so it's very difficult to demonstrate without it here. But imagine that this is a bull bar of my truck. And the bull bars on trucks come right up to here. There's a hell of a lot of vibration on them. And um, if you just put one of these onto a mount like that on the truck, it will actually shake even the heaviest antenna to pieces in next to no time. So what I've done in my left hand here, and we'll show you inside in a minute, is I've built up a homemade anti-vibration base, and I'll show you how it's done. Thank you. G'day, so now we've inside, thanks to Karen VK5 XL. XL, who's holding the camera at the moment. She's a bit camera shy, she doesn't want to get behind it. We're going to do a bit of soldering yesterday, Karen, weren't we? And mm -hmm. We never got around to your, your expertise on that. So what I've done is I've got two plates. These are 10 mil aluminium, which is probably, uh, I don't even know what 10 mil aluminium is, but it's just a little bit smaller than half inch steel, or half inch uh, plate. I've got alloy plate because it's uh, more conductive and it's lighter and easier to work with. On the bull bar of my truck, is a flat area similar to that. So all I've got is three bolts straight through the ball bar, bolt it up, that's as solid as a rock of Gibraltar. Now, as I said before, you've got to be watching the job. As I said before, you'll flog those antennas, they'll just shake themselves to bits in no time. So you've got to take some of the vibration out. And the way I've achieved that is four little rubber mountings here. And if you see, they've got plenty of flex in them. And all I've had to do to, do, to uh, install those is just drill a hole for each one in each plate on each side. Hole in the middle for the antenna mount. That's the antenna mount for that particular antenna. As you see, it's a very heavy, um, robust mount. And um, the last thing which I'll show you directly is these bonding straps. So now it's all fairly simple. It's just merely assembling this. Um, and I'll show you what the uh, finished product looks like in a minute. Because I don't think you really want to see me screw on four screws and fiddling around with washers. Probably the only important thing to show you here is I've used spacer washers to get them nice and level to shim them up between each one of these four pillars, four rubber posts, and the top um, bracket that we're going to have here. So that'll do for a minute. We'll come back shortly. So now after a significant amount of cursing and swearing because it's fairly awkward to do we've reassembled the contraption in between each one of these rubbers and each of these plates is a washer a spacer washer but it also acts to take some of the pressure between the, the plates and the rubber off I had to manufacture these screws because they're all different sizes and um, um, some of them I had to cut, shorten them. So I've had to space those out a bit with some shims. Later when I get the, uh, the correct screws, the extra washers will go out of that. Now as you can see here, hopefully, and Karen might focus down on here for a minute, come in close. Okay, you will see that as the vehicle moves, 
and as the wind blows and what have you, see this movement in that those rubbers there? Well, that's the idea of it. And then if you move back, so that the idea is that all the vibration that's happening down here does not get transferred up to this stick. So it won't be shaking the hell out of it thus. That will absorb it and mitigate the, the effects of it. You'll notice that on here are two straps, one on this side and one on that side. I just happened to put them on in that particular manner purely because I cut this one too short. But ideally I'd have them both the same length as that. But I was doing it in the dark and I was being hit by mozzies but I thought it was, I was just going to get it done as quick as I could. Now these straps are inch wide, braided copper and they've been tinned on top of which. So it's braided, um, tinned copper. Um, and there has to be one of those on each side, or at least a minimum of one. And the reason is, the top plate is isolated both in terms of elect, uh, DC and RF from the bottom plate. So you have to have that to provide that bonding to provide a complete circuit there between the two plates. And then as I said, that gets bolted onto the bull bar thus. So that about shows you what the uh, VK2XB come Indy, come whatever you want to call it, imitation of the Kodan isolation base looks like. Um, I would recommend it for anybody that is putting any type of whip antenna onto a, onto a surface that um, has an awful lot of vibration because the stresses on these antennas is unbelievable. I don't know how many I've seen just had the innards flogged out of them. Um, obviously not everybody's going to run an antenna as heavy as this one. Um, so you can scale down the size of the plates to something more appropriate and you can scale down the size of the rubbers. But the general um, idea should be retained because it's, um, it, it, it is really so important. It'll save you so many dollars in replacing antennas is not funny. Been there, done that. And at three or four hundred dollars an antenna or whatever the hell they cost um, is just, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be spending that sort of money when it's entirely preventable by making up one of these bases. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Hopefully you got some use out of this. And uh, see you in the next video. You can subscribe if you like. Um, you can hit the little bell if you want to. You can give me a thumbs up. Or you can make a comment and tell me to go to buggery. It doesn't make any difference to me whatsoever. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers for now. 73 from VK2XB.